Henry Porter is a journalist for The Observer, a UK-based publication, and he has been looking at the rampant gun uh, violence in the US, and he has a very interesting theory about how we should possibly deal with it, as a, not just as a country, not just in the US, but internationally. So this is what Henry Porter says. What if we no longer thought of this as just a problem for America, and instead viewed it as an international humanitarian crisis, a quasi-civil war, if you like, that calls for outside intervention? As citizens of the world, perhaps we should demand an end to the unimaginable suffering of victims and their families, the maiming and killing of children, just as America does it in every new civil conflict around the globe. And so that is obviously incredibly provocative, and thankfully it's a UK-based publication, so the, the chances of a conservative reading it are very low, both because it's the written word and also because it doesn't take place in the US. But if they read it, and inev inevitably it will filter through the Drudge Report and Fox News, their heads are going to explode. The idea that the UN would ever do to America what America forces the UN and American forces to do internationally, I don't think that they're going to like that. But it is an interesting idea, especially when you see the numbers of how many people are dying in this completely unnecessary gun violence in the US. And so Henry Porter compares it to the rationale that the US uses to intervene military, militarily in other countries. So generally we use some sort of excuse about terror attacks. So if uh, the US is attacked or another country is attacked, that is an excuse to move in. But what's interesting is that Henry Porter says there have been fewer than 20 terror related deaths on American soil since 9-11 and about 364,000 deaths caused by privately owned firearms. If any European nation had such a record and persisted in addressing only the first figure, the terror related figure, while ignoring the second, you can bet your last pound that the State Department would be warning against travel to that country and no American would set foot in it without body ar uh, armor. And so when you look at those numbers, I think that that should shift you in terms of how you view these competing, I guess, priorities in terms of violence. And it is odd to say, but in America, we have decided that certain forms of death, certain forms of violence are totally accessible, are, are totally uh, fine uh, to continue ongoing. I mean, for a long time, many of these totally optional things like smoking deaths. We didn't think that it was a problem as a country, even in the cases of secondhand smoke, and so we allowed tens of thousands to die uh, totally needlessly. Now we've moved on somewhat from that in terms of uh, societal uh, expectations of how we should respond to, to deaths, but in terms of the gun violence, we have not moved on. And so when you look at that, 364,000, think about how many 9-11s that is. And we have no problem with it because we see it as optional. We see it as voluntary. If people want to buy guns, it's protected by the Constitution and we shouldn't step in. But what's interesting is when we talk about gun control in America, and I, I hope, I don't think it'll ever come to the UN invading, but at some point we have to do something as a country. And when we talk about gun control in America, uh, progressives, liberals, whoever you want to say, those in favor of it, we don't ask that you surrender your guns. But imagine if we were to ask you to, how many deaths would it take before Americans were willing to give up their guns? Let's say we didn't have the Second Amendment and we were talking about possibly passing something like the Second Amendment. So guns are currently outlawed, we're gonna allow guns. How many deaths would we barter in terms of getting that right? Or getting that, w would that be okay if there were 2,000 deaths over the ten last 10 years, 20,000 deaths? 200,000 deaths. At what point does it become simply unacceptable to allow someone's either what they see as a need to defend themselves or their hobby in terms of hunting or going shooting or something like that? At what point does it simply become too much violence before we do something about it as a country? I mean, compare it to Hiroshima, compare it to the wars we've engaged in, Vietnam, the Revolutionary War, World War II. We're talking about far more people dying completely unnecessarily in just the last 10 years, and yet, because we, we have a constitutional right, because we think that you should be allowed to go, go and get these guns, it should be perfectly fine. So uh, I am not asking everyone to give up their guns. Uh, no, no one that I know of outside of possibly Dennis Kucinich are asking people to give up their guns. But at some point, over the next 30 years, but a kid could be born today, by the time he's a full grown adult, a million Americans could die from guns. And at some point that should shock the conscience. At some point that should lead to us wanting to do something.